Good morning from Grass Corp in Southern Indiana. This is our herd of beef steers behind us that we're getting ready to sell on the beef bonanza at the end of August. We've worked hard with these to keep them rotating over our soils, to rotationally graze them, to keep low stress for them. But it's not just about the animals and it's not just about getting that beef to you. It's about the soil that they're standing on and that I'm standing on as well today. The soil here is alive. And along with that comes a lot of benefits for our ecosystem. There's a lot of talk today about water pollution and global warming, it has been for a while. But we've been farming like this for years, trying to match and keep up with those concerns. The first big difference for us is water. Water falls from the sky as rain, we all know. But when it hits the soil, it can do several things. On most farming operations where they till the soil on a regular basis, the soil has no structure within itself. It's been worked up and turned to powder. And because there's no structure, the water has no place, no cavities to go into the soil. So many conventional farms, the water comes as rain and it slides across the top of the ground and it runs off. Most of the time taking valuable topsoil with it with a lot of nutrients, vitamins, and minerals and washes it away so that the plants, crops, and animals can no longer utilize them. On our farm here, because our soils are alive, we're not using chemicals, no fertilizers, we have lots of soil life. Because of that life and because we do not till the soil, there is structure and there are things in the soil that need that water. That water is valuable because it enters our soil. With that structure and the pore space, that water can enter and go deep and that water sits in those cavities and it waters the plants and the soil life for weeks to come. Also in our living soils, we're not dealing with just water, but we're dealing with the carbon material from the plants and the organisms that live there. When these things, these plants are grazed, they are defecated by the animals back on the soil. This is organic matter. When soil life, it changes life cycles and it dies, that's organic matter. The, the animals don't eat all of the plants. As you can see, there's still some left here and that will be laid down on the soil and returned for the organisms to decompose. And that's organic matter. What does this organic matter do? It is mostly carbon. This is a big thing for global warming as we know. And that carbon gets locked up in the soil. The plants and the animals and the ecosystem under the soil use that carbon for many things. Carbon is held in the soil, but it holds water. So as I talked about water and rain, the more carbon there is in the soil, the more water can be held there as well. On our farm here, we don't till the soil. We leave it intact and that allows that structure to form so it can hold water and organic matter there. Most farms, they till the soil. They work it up because it makes a nice seed bed or because it allows them to get a better stand of grasses or crops growing. But when they work the soil up, it destroys the structure and it opens up everything that's in the soil to the air. Opening up the ground to the air allows the carbon to rise into the air. And this is where a lot of our carbon in the air comes from. Also from fumes from gasoline and automobiles, but it comes from the soil as well. On our farm, we don't till the soil and that organic matter, that carbon stays in the soil where it can be used and reused for generations and it keeps the carbon out of the air where it belongs.